I saw your face again last night. It was like that time at the park. Our third date, I think. You asked if we could take another lap around the trail. I said sure, as long as we could hold hands. We sat on a bench for hours, watching the stars light up, getting in our first snuggles, laughing. Some of the details were different, but it was a nice dream. It made waking up in that basement cell all the more unbearable. I woke up on the floor, cold and in pain. I haven't slept in a bed for... God, has it been years? The clothes I was thrown into this hell with have long since worn to nothing. I still cling to the tatters. It might just be in my head, but I feel like they provide some warmth. Not enough to keep me from shivering uncontrollably, but some. Even if it is just in my head, every little comfort helps. Plus, every now and then, I catch your scent on it. Every little comfort. There was no way to tell time down there. I never knew when he was coming back. My ribs were starting to bruise pretty bad from his last visit, and my lip felt like it was starting to scab. I figured I'd been out maybe an hour. A familiar stinging pain radiated from my stomach, chest, legs, arms, everywhere that touched the ground, really. Splinters. The wooden chair I'd been strapped into when I first got here had long since been demolished. My right arm never set right, come to think of it. There's not an inch of floor not covered in old splinters now. I tried to clean them up once. He just brought in fresh wood and broke it on me. Ground it up in his impossibly strong hands and threw new shards of wood all over. He says I'm not allowed to stop bleeding. Long ago... No way to really tell how far back. I thought I was going to die for sure. My arm was broken. A huge chunk of wood was jammed into my inner thigh. Pretty sure my jaw was out of its socket. I stopped screaming for him to stop. I knew he wouldn't. Plus I saw it made him mad. I figured he might go ahead and kill me. I thought I was ready right up until his hands clamped around my neck. A flicker of hope danced through my mind. I could still be rescued. I could still have a life. I hadn't been down there long, maybe a couple months. I struggled, weak. He spat in my face as he screamed, asked me if I thought I was done, asked if I thought I was at my limit. My face must have shown I was. I was absolutely at my breaking point. I saw his terrifying smile then. He told me I wasn't even close. He said I'd feel like I wouldn't be able to take anymore, but then I would, because I didn't have a choice. He said he hadn't even started, and that he wouldn't let me die until he was finished with me. He was right, of course. I don't even believe in limits anymore. I've been pushed so far past what I thought would kill me, so far past how much I thought I could hurt, so many times. I was broken, utterly broken not long after that. I had even long since abandoned the hope he would grow tired of me and finally kill me. His appetite is bottomless, his imagination limitless. He always finds a way to make it hurt more the next day. Tonight I noticed my light flickering. The ceiling wasn't finished down there, so you could see the wiring. For the briefest moment, I swear I saw a spark, then another. I had an idea. One of the arms of the chair was still mostly intact. I tried to stand, but pain shot through my right leg, dropping me face first back onto the cold floor. More splinters. I pushed myself up with my left arm and pulled myself over to the wall. I was able to stand up. Pain shot through my leg again, but I was able to push past it. Compared to him, it was nothing. I leaned forward to grab the arm but stumbled and fell. Something pushed its way into my abdomen. I didn't look, but I could feel it was bleeding. I cried and screamed and stood, then fell back against the wall, chair arm in hand. I weakly raised the arm of the chair towards the wires. The ceiling was lower than normal, but I was just missing it. I'd have to get closer. I took a few deep breaths, 
each one sending hot pain through my new abdomen wound. I knew I could do it. If I could survive everything he'd done to me, I could do this. I took a step. I screamed as my legs buckled, and I was sure I was going to fall. But I didn't. I stood there, a shaking, unsteady mess. I took another step. Every tendon in my body felt like a thin metal string about to snap, but I stood. I took one more. I was barely holding on, but I was right there, right beneath the light. I held the chair arm up, wobbling helplessly, body racked with countless pains, threatening to give out at any moment. I thrust up at the wires. I could reach them. I must have prodded at them a dozen times before something wrenched free up there. Two wires and a little arc snapping between them. I smiled for the first time I could really remember and pushed them up into the insulation above. At first, nothing happened. Then there was a smell, then smoke, then flame. Once it caught, I heard myself laugh and I fell backwards. Something punctured the small of my back. I didn't care. I watched as the fire spread. The smoke was worming its way up into the house above. Eventually the chill left the room, but I couldn't stop shaking. A half hour must have passed. I could hear sirens. Hope showed its stupid face again, right as the fire started to creep down the walls. I tried to get to the door, but I couldn't even get up. I felt a coldness inside my body as it refused to work, simultaneously breaking into a sweat as the flames danced closer. Smoke was still venting up into the house, but the room was getting unimaginably hot. Then something fell on me. I instantly knew I was burning. I could feel the flames lick across my stomach and chest, charring and curling up flecks of skin as it went. I could smell myself cooking as I heard the siren settle in front of the house above. The flames spread up the front of my throat, down my sides and across my back, down my legs, into my hair. Just then, the door exploded open. Someone was pulling the debris off of me. Hope exploded into my mind. I was being rescued. After all this, I had been found. I was too hurt too badly damaged, too far gone to react when I saw his wild eyes locked onto mine. He was screaming, but I couldn't hear it. He picked up the arm of the chair and brought it down hard on my stomach. I felt it break through the charred skin. He brought it down over and over, harder than he ever had before. He rained down blows onto my face, across my chest, between and onto every part of my legs. My arms, my hands, my feet. The pain was remarkable. A new personal best for him. And then it was... fine. I could see him standing over me, taking my pulse, shaking me, screaming. I didn't care. I didn't care that I wasn't being saved. Didn't care about the life that he had wasted. Didn't care what he had taken from me. I knew I was moving on. I couldn't feel the pain. I didn't want to die, didn't want to live, I wanted nothing. I saw the edges closing in, and for the first time since I had been dragged out of that park, I was at peace. I saw the firemen shuffle in behind him, I saw him fighting them, I saw him get shot, then stand, then get shot again and stop moving. I knew he was gone, that he'd died before me. I wasn't happy, I wasn't relieved, I felt nothing, and it all faded. The rest was black. No pain, no comfort, no noise, no silence. Nothing. I was done. Then I woke up looking at you. The doctor came in and talked to me through my injuries, the treatment, the plan. I remember everything, all the abuses, all the pain. All the lost hope, the crying and the shame. But mostly, I remember the black, the release from it all. I should still be there. I should be dead. I hate you for taking that from me. I hate you more than I ever hated him.
Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. I know it's been a few pastas in a row, but don't worry about it. I have a true scary stories lined up. I just had a lot of stuff going on for a couple weeks, but I have a few yeses on stories and I got some more requests out there. So, and if you haven't watched it, I really liked the last story I did. It's called No Ho Station. And I'll have a link to it right here at the end somewhere. It's even got a little skit at the end, so check it out. Anyways, be good to animals, even people. So. Yo, it's Neymar, Barracks, Mr. Crash.